Okay, so I have this very simple model of the Minnesota State Capitol building. And all I want to do in this video is uh, add some control loops and possibly some creases so that when I go to the smooth preview, oops, I accidentally added an edge loop. Uh, when I go to the smooth preview, it still looks like an actual building and not this weird lumpy thing. And we're just going to do that through uh, edge loops. So I'm going to start in edge mode. I have opened up my insert edge loop tool settings and I'm just going to stay with equal distance from edge. Uh, I'm not going to be super exact and precise with making sure every edge loop is an even distance away. There's going to be some eyeballing involved. So there's a couple of ways you can kind of go about doing this. I find when, when you at least start doing this, uh, being able to visualize the effects that you're having is useful. So if you hit two, a number, two on the number pad, you will see the smoothed result, the smooth preview, um, but you will still see the kind of regular unsmoothed edit cage. If you hit three, then you will see, well, in object mode, you, you see just the smoothed. Uh, with three, with two, you see both versions, and with one, you see just the unsmoothed. Uh, but I find, uh, yeah, when you're just starting to smooth things out, it's good to see the result that you're having immediately. Um, I do also want to mention that this is not a, this is usually one of the last steps that I do. You know, when you get a feel for this and how it, how it reacts, you can do it a little bit earlier, but um, you don't want to do it too early in the process because what you're doing is you're adding extra geometry, extra edge loops that are going to complicate any extrusions, um, selections, you know, if I need to extrude the side out here to select all those faces, right now there's, I don't know, nine faces, nine, ten faces. But once I start adding edge loops, there might be closer to 20 faces, and it's just, it's a little bit slower that way. So it tends to be one of the later processes uh, for me. But as we, we kind of look at how this is set up, um, there's this little retaining wall, which is... Um, little extrusion here. We've got a bunch of cube-like shapes and then we've got a couple of domes. So let's start at the base of this um, and kind of figure out where we want to go. Now there's no faces on the bottom of this and so I don't think I'm really going to need... come on... edge mode. I don't think I'm really going to need any edge loops here. I don't think that's really going to do anything because it's already sharp because there's not a face pulling it in, smoothing it out. Uh, I think, but at the top, we've got this retaining wall, so we can add one, add an edge loop right up there, and you see how that's already, already sharper. Let's see if I can get a better view of that. So before, Okay, and, and look at the profile kind of right here would be the most obvious. So I'm going to add the edge loop a little bit away from the from the edge, right? This is a, a control edge to give me a, a nice smooth bevel. Um, and I'm not looking for a super sharp edge. But after I add it, I can always move it up a little bit higher. Uh, so, you know, the closer it gets to that leading edge, the sharper that transition is going to be. Be careful if you're moving these edges in, you know, three on the number pad in smooth view, because you can go past it. You know, like right here, now we're getting this weird dip, and when you unsmooth it, this is what the geometry looks like, and that's a bad thing, because what, what, what happens is we've got two faces that are sharing the exact same space overlapping, um, which creates these render errors, so we don't want to do that. But something like that I think will work. Um, along this top side, we can add some more edge loops. So I'll just add one right about there. And you can see how this is that creased up the outside. Now this inside radius, we'll add one more. See, that gets sharper. On the inside here, we'll add another edge loop, and now we've made that that wall sharper there. Uh, and I'll 
periodically jump out into object modes. You can kind of see where these edges are going and what that's looking like. Let's go back and now you can see that there's obviously these these transitions should be sharper so we need to add let's see let's start out here let's add an edge loop right in there and see what this is doing something that I don't really like this is not going all the way around and that's because do a bunch of times here. This edge loop that I added didn't actually go all the way around the model. And that's not good. I'm not sure why. So I'm going to leave that for now. Let's focus on these vertical ones. So you can add this one in here, kind of slide it near the corner. Mm. So I want it to be closer to this outside corner. So I'm going to go into my options and go to relative distance from edge. And that's going to keep it closer to where I want it to be. Okay, it's also going to sharpen this edge flows all the way across, so it's going to sharpen all the way down. And I'll get the other side of the corner here. And we hit three on the number pad, and you can kind of compare it to the other corners, right? So that's that's one corner. Um, I'm going to let you guys just kind of work through this. And we'll, we'll see what you come up with. The one kind of caveat of this is that it does add a bunch of geometry, right? There's a lot more faces being added because I'm adding a lot of edges, uh, which in turn will take longer to render. So if there's a detail that isn't that important, uh, what you can do is instead of adding edge loops is you can just crease it. So let's say this top little spire detail wasn't that important and I, I you know I'm not gonna see it super close up what I can do is select those edges and shift right click and we've got uh, the crease tool right here so you select the crease tool and you've got this little tool tip select components and then middle mouse button uh, click and drag so middle mouse click and drag and you can see it it turns bold now if I hit two or three on the number pad you'll really see this result right it is sharpening that corner but it's not it's not quite as clean the shading isn't quite as clean as if you add the edge loops um, which is why I don't like to use this for things that I'm gonna see close up but for more minor details uh, it works pretty well so you can select let's do this one as well uh, for a little extra practice so shift right click crease tool middle mouse click and drag and maybe this edge too right so you can very quickly go through that now these uh, kind of insets here are a tricky thing to do with edge loops or because let me let me show you if we go back to our edge edge loop tool uh, the way the geometry is here, we can sharpen it on the inside. But we're, what we're also doing is we're adding facets facets to the dome. And that kind of works for the Capitol building aesthetic, but if you don't want this dome to be faceted and have these ridges in it, then you can't really use edge loops going up the side. What you need to do instead is crease. So and what we can do is select these inside edges, shift right click, crease tool, middle mouse button, click and drag. Uh, and it looks like we also need to select those edges and now we've got more of a crease. 
and you can do the same thing with these. All right, and now we've got. Now, also, also I should mention that th this is not a one or the other thing. Um, the crease works on a scale from zero to one, so you can, if you just want a little bit of a crease, you know, you don't have to go all the way. You've got a range that you can that you can work in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the video here and let you guys work through it, and then I will come back once it's all done. Okay, so not completely done, but I want to hit some of the highlights as far as the obstacles um, that have to be overcome here. The way that the edge flow is set up means that just adding edge loops to crease all of the corners doesn't really work, um, particularly right here. Uh, and the reason is because if I add an edge loop, so I've got an edge, insert edge loop. If I try to crease up this right here, you can see this, this curve, this slope. If I try to crease that up, oops, that edge loop flows up into the dome, which I don't want, because then uh, when we get it back out into object mode, now we've got this ridge in the dome, which ruins everything. So instead, what you need to do is use a selective crease, right? So select the edges that you want to crease and tuck them in. You can see that you also need to crease this one right here and that one right there. All right. And now we can compare the two sides. It actually looks like maybe we want to crease one more there. One or two more edges there to make sure that we get a nice smooth transition. There we go. All right. And then there's still maybe maybe that edge too. to get things all nice and even and smooth. Um, so that was that's kind of the big area. I also realized that on this particular model, I did not, this is not the finished version of it, so the dome is not connected to the body of the capital, so that's incorrect. Um, if this was connected, what I would recommend for like you need to, this should be modeled with an extra edge loop at the bottom here so that you have, oh, let me go into regular mode, so that you've got room to add an edge loop all the way around the base of the dome, right? Otherwise you can't add a consistent edge loop all the way around the bottom here just because of the way that the geometry is moving. This is a face loop, it is not a face loop all the way around. so. Uh, I would recommend that. That's kind of one of those considerations that, <coughs> you know, as you do enough modeling and you do enough of this sort of smoothing out, you start to plan for these components. Um, that's kind of part of my thought process when I'm figuring out the best way to approach any given object. Um, but it's a difficult thing to explain if you don't have, you know, the experience and, and actually the practice of going through this process. So uh, I also screwed up over here and there's a big old n-gon which is causing weirdness right you can see this is the weirdness that is caused by n-gons and uh, you know overlapping faces and all of that so apologies there for giving you terrible geometry that's the type of thing that I don't want to see in your <laughs> final projects um, you can just delete that face and then just rebridge oops rebridge the faces and now everything is fine um, I did the the edge loops the kind of the corner edge loops around these smaller domes I did just crease um, either one works it just felt like it was a small enough detail that it didn't justify adding the extra edge loops 
Um, I think that worked just fine. I did crease all of the windows, and it's not my favorite thing. I, I, I don't like the shading isn't quite as clean as I would like it to be, so maybe that should be, you know, edge loops where you can and then supplement the rest with, with creases. But um, that's how I approached it, and you can see the before and the after uh, on the two sides. So, again, be judicious, uh, but it is a, a useful part of the process.